want to know who is the closest to Allah? He is the person who has the most beautiful character. Your closeness to Allah is very closely reflected in your character. Those who are harsh and hard hearted, they cannot be close to Allah. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ It is by the mercy of Allah that you have become lenient towards those around you. Had you been hard hearted or harsh, they would have dispersed. They wouldn't even want to be in your company. But when someone is very polite, when someone is very concerned about the goodness reaching you, you want to be in their company. You, you are impressed. You feel so much at home. You feel like you know them. You feel so close because you're a human. You have feelings. You have a heart. You have a mind just like theirs. And they are appealing to you because they are speaking the language of humanity as a believer. So subhanallah, Allah draws you close through your difficulty. I mentioned the two points. The one is some people through their difficulty, they get closer to Allah. Those whose Iman is weak, their belief is weak. They question Allah. But sometimes Allah keeps you in your hardship. Do you know why? He knows if I were to take this away, this person might just go back. Well, Allah knows for certain we don't know. So he says, I love the way you're worshiping me. You're crying to me. You're softened. You get up every morning. You're reaching out to others. You speak so politely. Finally, with your daughter. In -law. Sorry to give that example. But anyway, you speak so politely with those around you. Finally, subhanallah. And you're such a lovely person. Because of your difficulty. So Allah says, can't we keep you like this for a little longer? And you want it today, now. Well, I want to give you good news. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Allah remains in the assistance of a worshipper for as long as that worshipper remains in the assistance of another. If you want help, the first thing to do, start helping others. You'll get the help. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says. And like I said earlier, it's our duty to go out and hunt. You know, I read the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhuma. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, one of the things he says about zakah, he said you should teach the people one, two, three, and then he said, فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ فِي فُقَرَائِهِمْ Let them know. Let them know that Allah has made incumbent or compulsory upon them that they give a charity. It shall be taken from the rich and distributed into the poor. Subhanallah. That is why Allah gave you more. Allah did not give you more so that you can amass it to the degree that you have forgotten to build your hereafter. Allah gave it to you so that you can give others. In Surah Al Nur, Allah says, Give them from the wealth of Allah that He made you a custodian of. Do you know what that means? It's not yours. Malillah. The wealth belongs to Allah, not to you. You're a custodian of it. When you came onto the earth, like I started off by saying you had zero. When you shall leave, you shall leave with zero. What you did in the center, in the middle, your transactions and the way you transacted, that is what will help you in your grave and in your hereafter. So build, build your palace in the hereafter. It is everlasting way beyond your imagination. And this is why my brothers, my sisters today, we are seated here 30 years of Africa Muslims agency. Hafid Imran made mention of my father. I was going to say that anyway, that I recall your dad, may Allah give him Jannatul Firdaus. And for your information, that's the reason why the moment I received a call, I have a soft spot for Africa Muslims agency. I told him, brother, I will be there. He told me, we will cover your costs. We will this. I said, listen, brother, I'm not interested in covering any costs. I will be insulted if you gave me anything. I'm coming for the sake of Allah. 
and I'm coming because I believe it's good work and I'm coming because I'm impressed by what has been achieved a little seed that was sown and don't you dare think that oh this is money from the Gulf states no way if you think that it's the devil making you run away because of some bad deed you've done from giving it is money from here that's distributed across the globe I promise you the South African example shines across the globe it's one country that Allah has blessed in an con in a continent that really needs a lot of help so thank Allah keep on giving when you give Allah will give you more I promise you the Prophet says nobody has ever become bankrupt because of giving charitable subhanallah that's a guarantee from your messenger if ever you fear poverty give charity it will come back to you multiply I promise you it's in the Quran if ever you fear poverty give a charity it doesn't have to be all your money like Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu those were the superheroes we could not compete with them but what it definitely is small portion one rand five rands and this is why when you read surat al duha if you were to read it with its meaning your life will change the prophet muhammad peace be upon him by the choice of allah divine choice he was an orphan why isn't that consolation to all the orphans across the globe that the best of creation the most noble of all prophets the top of the top was actually an orphan there's hope for you more than there is for me who had both parents wow wow Allah has chosen you my beloved orphan child Allah has chosen you way above me your head start is a few kilometers in front of me because the most beloved already there was a quality from birth that you share that I don't have that's why Allah says as for the orphan don't be hard on him don't be harsh don't rebuke don't abuse an orphan be kind subhanallah and the prophet muhammad peace be upon him speaks about an orphan he says Ana wa fil jannah. myself and the one who takes care of an orphan shall be in paradise like these two fingers and he joined the two fingers that i'm showing you right now the first and the second why those are in need people say innocent children yes but they're in that condition because it's a test for you who are around what will you do solely for the sake of Allah? Will you help? There is a widow. The hadith says those who spend their day or those who assist widows and orphans for the sake of Allah are equivalent in reward to the one who stood in prayer all night, every night and the one who fasts every day on condition that you do it for the sake of Allah. Today, she's a pretty lady. Let's help. Subhanallah. You know what I'm talking about? It's facts, but she's old. You know, she might not be that attractive. Subhanallah, what hypocrisy is this? Is that what we've become? Is that how low we've become? I'd like to hope it's not the case. You help for the sake of Allah and Allah alone. Allah alone. And remember, if you don't help, it's quite simple. It's going to come from someone else. And it's been proven. Read the verse of the Quran. If you turn away, Allah says, we will replace you with those who won't be like you. They won't be like you. They'll be better. So don't think the work of Allah and don't think reaching out to the poor across the globe is connected to you alone. No, if you are on it, it's a favor of Allah that he convinced you. He put it in your heart to give. But if you are miserly, trust me, the work will continue even beyond your imagination.